Jacques Cousteau said, you can't have a profound experience and not share it with people. It definitely was not what I was intending to share with people. I, th I thought I was going to be a Buddhist nun. That was the route I was headed to. And then I went to a party, and I met a Buddhist. And it was a terrible party, but he, <laughs> he was good. And, and he said, I want to introduce you to this practice. And I said, okay. And he said, oh, it's a, it's a sexuality practice. And I said, okay. And they said, no, 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 you'll just lie down. You'll take off your pants. I'll stroke you for 15 minutes. And then when it's over, you're free to go. What? <laughs> and I don't know what happened. You know, it was... <laughs> Maybe. You said yes, obviously. <laughs> I said, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know, I know that that happened. You know, and then and then I tried it, and it, he bypassed some kind of vigilance center. That, um, I I reverse engineered it since. Like, how did I say yes? But I tried it, and when I tried it, it was um, well. The experience I had was everything I had had in sitting meditation in terms of, you know, kind of like cosmic connection and bliss and all of those things. But what, I, what really happened was I had the most profound human connection I had ever experienced. It was like I was lying there and normally I did what so many of my clients do. You know, I was thinking, I was like, this is kind of weird and Ew, he's kind of creepy, and uh, I don't know if we're going to get married. I don't know if we're going to have kids. And then all of a sudden it was like, and whatever I experienced was the feeling everything is supposed to be, is what I thought. There's usually a few things people come to the practice with, and it's really different for everybody. Um, the process of coaching usually looks like um, educating people about how female orgasm works, which is distinct from how male orgasm works. Um, normally, I start sessions by asking people, hey, have you noticed that men's bodies and women's bodies work a little bit differently? And the answer is usually yes. And so we start there. You'd, well, you'd hope that the answer would be yes. <laughs> but the, at least have some, uh, some awareness about that, right? Well, you, you'd hope so. But the, the norm is usually that they approach their sex lives as if that isn't true. I was coaching, and pretty much every woman came in who had some version of the same symptoms. And so it was some version of uh, the tired and I'm tired and wired. And I call it the Western woman's mantra. I eat too much. I work too hard. You know, I, I try to take care of my kids. I try to take care of my family. I give, I love, and still there's this hunger that I feel. And so what we were finding is that that hunger was being gratified as um, women were oming more. And one of the reasons that is, we found out, you know, we've done the science now, is a lot of it's just low oxytocin and high cortisol. And so you see these symptoms of like, um, like for example, if you have low oxytocin, uh, you can't help but frown. The elasticity in your skin goes down. Mm -hmm. um, the chronic voices in your head begin to raise. So that tendency to kind of be overly reactive, your tendency to cry goes up. All of these things that we kind of consider the stereotype of woman, when, when you break it down, often it's just really mixed up hormones that very easily can be replenished through the practice.